everyone, my name's Megan, and I am a grad student studying evolutionary genetics in the Willett Lab at UNC. Today I'm going to be bringing you along to show you what I do in a typical day as a biologist. So first, just a quick introduction to my research. I study how organisms adapt to changes in their environment, and specifically what genetic changes underlie these adaptations. The two organisms that I focus on are the tobacco hornworm caterpillar, which is an insect crop pest found natively in North Carolina, and the copepod, which is a tiny aquatic animal that's somewhat similar to a shrimp. For my research, I determine the specific DNA sequences, that is, the particular order of A's, T's, C's, and G's for these organisms' entire genome, and then I compare how these DNA sequences differ between different populations of animals living in different environments. Once I've gotten everything set up at my desk for the day, usually I'll start by checking and responding to emails. Some of the emails I might get include notifications about cool new research that's just come out, to emails from my advisor with edits on my latest manuscript. After that, I'll plan out my day and make a to-do list with all the tasks that I want to accomplish. Next is time for a quick coffee break. Here I'm making my way down the hallway to our break room uh, which is where we can eat because we're not allowed to eat in the lab and I'll make myself a cup of coffee. Sometimes if there's other people around, I'll spend this coffee break catching up with fellow grad students, but today there was no one else in yet, so instead I brought my laptop and spent the time reading a paper that we'll be discussing in our lab group meeting later this week. Back at my desk, I get started on the next task, which is running some code to, that will analyze um, some genetic data that I'm working on. And this particular code actually takes multiple days to run, um, and so rather than keeping that running on my laptop for that whole period of time, I can actually submit this job to an external computing cluster that's hosted at UNC, um, which allows it to run there instead of on my laptop. And by this time, one of my lab mates had come in, um, so I just took a break to stop by and say hi to Amy, who is working on her own research at a microscope. Now I'm going to be doing some more analysis, this time using a program called R, which is a statistical programming language. And the code that I'm running right now is generating some graphs for a paper I'm in the middle of writing. And once the code runs, it generates this figure, uh, which you can see there. And up next is some bench work. Today I'm going to be extracting DNA from some of my samples. And DNA extractions are a laboratory technique where we take tissue, which of course contains cells, and purify the DNA contained within those cells by removing proteins, fats, RNA, and other various cellular debris. Here you can see me getting set up and getting all of the buffers and other supplies that I'm going to need for this process out and ready to go. And all of these buffers need to be added to my sample um, in very specific amounts. So to do this, I use a pipette, which allows me to measure these amounts of liquid accurately. And now you can see me mixing my sample together using a machine called a vortex and then I'm going to be incubating it at a specific temperature on a heat block. And here is just a close-up view of that process. Up next, I'm adding my sample to a new tube that contains a filter in the center. 
and the DNA binds to this filter, um, which allows us to wash all the contaminants away from the DNA. And to do this, we use another machine called a centrifuge. So we can add the tubes into this machine and it spins it very quickly, which pushes the liquid down into the bottom. And as hopefully you can see from all of these sped up clips, this is a pretty extensive uh, process. Um, it requires me to pipette a lot of different buffers. Um, and in general, this takes between two to three hours to do, depending on how many samples I'm processing at once. And then once I'm done with all the different steps in the DNA extraction protocol, I use a machine called a qubit, um, which allows us to determine the concentration of DNA uh, that we end up with in our tube. And I did a little happy thumbs up because it worked and we ended up with good amounts of DNA this time around. And then of course, once I'm done with the DNA extraction, I need to tidy up by putting everything away and wiping down my lab bench. And now I'm just recording all those DNA concentrations um, from my lab notebook into a spreadsheet. And then at this point I was getting pretty hungry and I didn't have any other lab work for today. So I decided to go home to eat lunch. So here I am just packing up all my stuff. And here I am leaving, and my lab's on the fourth floor of this building, so there's a whole bunch of stairs to go down to get back out. So after leaving lab, I walked home and ate lunch, um, which I forgot to film. Um, and then after that, I went over to my friend's house, who's also a fellow grad student in my program. And we're both in the last year of our PhD, um, which means that we have to spend a lot of time devoted towards writing our dissertation at this point, which is what we're working on here. And then once we finished all of our work, we ended the day just taking her dog Oliver for a quick walk. Mm -hmm. 